So good morning, everyone. Um, I hope everything's okay. So today we are on our podcast. We are in the beautiful setting of Tamaha, Black River. And we are in the office of Quantu. And uh, we are going to be with uh, Han, um, Han Lindy. Um, she is the co-founder of uh, Quantu. And she's going to talk about uh, online marketing, digital marketing, social media. Um, she's actually um, a trainer, online marketing trainer, and uh, we are going to to develop this aspect with her today. So good morning, Ken. Good morning. Thank you for and being here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for welcoming us in your beautiful office. Um, I would like uh, you to introduce yourself a little bit. Um, so please, Ken. <laughs> Good pronunciation, first of all. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's very hard for English speaking, so I appreciate the effort. Uh, yeah, so my name is Chen, and uh, I live in Mauritius since 2012. And uh, in 2015, I co-founded uh, Quantu, which is a company that is specializing in online marketing, uh, content creation, uh, web development, and training, online marketing. I started in the online marketing world in 2009, and uh, I always like to say that in a specific context, that <clears throat> back then, uh, social media hasn't exploded yet for businesses. So when I started, I was doing a lot of media buying on websites, I was doing Google campaigns, but barely social media. And uh, when you look at the world of online marketing today, there is a confusion because when you say online marketing or digital marketing, people immediately think social media or even worse, they just think Facebook, like it ends there. But the world of online marketing is much, much bigger. And so, yeah, so in 2015, we co-founded Quantum and Quantum is helping businesses to improve their online visibility or to create it. And not a lot after I started training companies, mainly companies, to their in-house staff. Uh, I have a few types of trainings. Uh, either it's an in-house training where I go to a company and I train the in-house staff in their premises and their convenience, or a public training where I set the agenda and all the details and I invite the general public or marketers, managers, anyone uh, who wants to join uh, to come and spend the day with us. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for that. And what would be, um, according to you, the difference between like online marketing and marketing. <laughs> What's the difference? Yeah. So marketing is a much bigger uh, umbrella of yeah. online marketing. Uh, uh, marketing is the big thing. It's all the channels offline, online, uh, the bigger strategies. Uh, there's another confusion between online marketing and digital marketing. So yes. usually it's used in the same context. And the only difference is that digital marketing refers to the screens meaning the digital screens, so you, you don't have to be connected for it. And online marketing, it's in the context of being connected to the internet. So any uh, promotion, promotional thing, marketing uh, campaign that is running on digital screen would go on under digital marketing and online marketing would be only in the context of you need to be connected to see this promotional uh, thing. So, but to, in today's context, most people use it in the same context. So it's just... Uh, it's online anyway, the group. Yeah, well, again, you could do digital marketing on digital screens without being on the internet. A digital billboard, the, the screens that you see when you go into yes, supermarkets. Yes, exactly. So this is digital marketing. But so we can say that digital marketing falls part maybe of the online marketing as well. Uh, yeah, yes. or, one aspect yeah of or, the, or vice versa, yes. because uh, you need, if you need to be connected, then it's a restriction. So online marketing would be under digital marketing because online marketing has to happen on screen. Yes. But Yeah, but it's really... I, I, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, and it's insignificant. But usually, you understand either from the context, and the truth is that most people don't do this distinction. Uh, so, w when you say online marketing, you actually refer to four or five main channels. So, search uh, marketing, search being the biggest search engine is Google, display marketing, so all the banners, interstitials that you see between screens when you play games on your mobile app or read the news, uh, social media. Uh, so under, and under social media, of course, you have all the platform. Facebook is the biggest monster, monster of them all. 
לינקדאין, אינסטגרם, טוויטר, טיק טוק, סנאפ צ'אט, קלאב האוס ריסנטלי, אנד סו און, אנד סו און. אנד דן אימייל מרקטינג, אוסו דורס אנדר אונליין מרקטינג. It's a main channel. A lot of people, when you say email marketing, they, they feel uncomfortable. It's like it's the 90s, it's spam. But the truth is that it's one of the most effective marketing okay. methods uh, today. Video marketing, of course. Uh, again, YouTube being the monster of them all. Uh, and then some, some other things uh, like affiliate marketing and influencer marketing, everything that's related to the technologies that are changing our world. Augmented reality, virtual reality, IoT, Internet of Things. Um, but the main channels are the first ones that I uh, mentioned. So this is online marketing. So um, tell, tell me more about Quantum. What's the difference, uh, what difference does Quantum make from the business market, for the market, for the business market? Yeah. Um, as compared to other um, online marketing companies. Yeah. So... Um, You know, uh, when we, there is a challenge with online marketing. The thing is that it's relatively new. It's uh, companies like Google, Facebook, they exist barely 20 years. 20 years sounds like a lot, but when you compare it to any other profession, uh, psychology, m- medical, everything, like hundreds of years. So it's relatively new and uh, the shift in businesses is happening very, very slow. although the shift for individuals is happening very, very fast. So you would take an average manager, an average marketer. Uh, I, I, would, I would focus on managers because I, I do believe that the change should come from, manage, from the management. Uh, so mid-management, senior management, they, in their personal life, they did the transition. They were looking at their mobile phones, they were looking at their laptops uh, uh, all day long, <laughs> exactly. all day long. They are connected when there's a, a, a poop on the TV, and then there's an ad on the TV, they take their phone and they start scrolling LinkedIn or Facebook or, or maybe they check their email. Uh, and so for themselves, they did it, but for their companies, the shift is happening much slower and uh, it's a big miss out. And, On one hand, it's very understood because the way you manage your social media for yourself is different than what you do for businesses. But I would expect that uh, managers would understand it much um, that faster. Yes, yeah, exactly. That they would yes. do the shift much faster uh, and say, wait, I mean, we are super behind on online marketing. And I think this is, this is really the gap where we come into the picture. Managers... That didn't understand yet that there's something big happening here for businesses the truth is that we can't do much because we can't convince them on a, on channels that already work and then we're not trying to I, I think it's a, a pushing a boulder up a hill it, yes. it's, a, it's really a waste of time for both sides but a lot of companies understand and then they realize that they don't have the skills they don't have the knowledge they don't have the experience and this is where we come into the picture because we have experience with the Uh, businesses from de- very different industries uh, and what we like I said what we do is that we help them either create their own visibility from scratch or improve what they're already doing of course uh, aligned with their business goals of course uh, uh, you had yeah. them also empower themselves uh, absolutely digitally yes <laughs> yes absolutely in, in a way we are their face uh, online uh, of many companies uh, around uh, between 25 to 30 brands at uh, any given time. So we, we are their face. And um, I, I, I think that one of the things that um, uh, we truly believe in and makes us different is that um, we educate our clients. Yes. We don't patronize them. Uh, it's very easy to patronize with big words and uh, abbreviations. And, uh, and for us, it's completely on the contrary. Uh, in fact, we recently launched a mobile app that it's purely educational, a free mobile app. It's called the OMG, Online Marketing Glossary. Wow. Uh, it's more than 300 terms, uh, online marketing terms, that uh, anyone can download from the iOS or Android uh, stores mm-hmm. and uh, educate themselves. Uh, we truly believe in education. We truly believe in uh, helping these businesses understand and navigate because it's, it's so hard. It's not like in a one-hour meeting that we will do Uh, they will get they will be at the top of their game for everything it's, 
it's an ongoing process because this world changes a lot. Yes, for sure, especially after the pandemic. Uh, yeah. A lot of businesses have gone online. Oh, yeah. Fact. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, online business, uh, yeah. online marketing is becoming much, much more important yeah. nowadays. Yeah, what, what happened with the pandemic is uh, that um, as soon as the lockdown started in any country, at least the countries where you are connected to the internet, yes. uh, unfortunately, out of uh, 7, 8 billion uh, people in the world, uh, only around half of us are connected to the internet. But where they are connected to the internet, what happened is that a lot of businesses woke up one day and they had uh, zero communication with their clients. And uh, it kind of uh, shocked them. Uh, so it definitely showed the importance of online marketing, but uh, I like to say that the online marketing, uh, social media, any other channel under online marketing, it's not a vending machine. You don't come, you put in money and something comes up on the other yes. side. So, uh, and, and I think that businesses learned it in the pandemic as well, that uh, they, they went online and uh, magic didn't happen and they, they were so surprised, but yeah, you can't do magic. I, I do think that, you know, it, it really showed the importance of it and I hope that, uh, you know, businesses really understand why it's important to be online, pandemic or no pandemic, lockdown or no exactly. lockdown. My next question uh, specifically comes after what you just said. Yeah. It's about uh, how do you assess the consistency of the online marketing for a business? Yeah. What's the results? Yeah. After some years, after they, for example, okay, they booked you, um, you're following them, you're doing all the online marketing for them. What's the results and how do you assess the consistency of all these uh, actions? Yeah. It's a really good question. Um, uh, my answer can be split in many ways, but I will start with uh, it's very hard to, to assess. Uh, it's very hard to quantify what is the value of... We have companies, our company exists for six and a half years. Some of our uh, clients, beloved clients, uh, have been with us for five, six years, almost since we started. How do you quantify the visibility of company X for five years on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on uh, email, in the inboxes of people, when the people search, uh, if let, let's say it's a company that serves Mauritian clients, uh, people uh, search in Mauritius uh, for the things that this company is selling and the, uh, their the search results are coming up, and then they go and visit their website, they leave the website and they see banners across news websites, um, uh, and so on and so forth. How do you quantify the this um, top of mind thing that you built for so many years uh, into uh, leads. dollars. <laughs> yeah, not into dollars, yeah, into leads. leads. I jumped into to clients. the end. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so, so that's why I think it's very hard. Yeah. Uh, having said that, uh, <laughs> there, there is um, in our company what we usually do, and most online com marketing companies do, I assume, what we do is that every uh, beginning of the month, not even year or quarterly, every beginning of the month, we sit and we check what happened in the month that just finished for each and every client that we worked with. And what worked well, what didn't work well, what brought leads, what didn't bring leads, and what failed miserably. And yeah, it happens. One of the most beautiful things about online marketing is that you can test stuff and then you can fail fast because you can uh, test uh, things so easily. So... Uh, we do this really overview of what happened during the month and we learn from the results. Of course. So, uh, and some companies, you know, they say, listen, we need uh, to reach that goal. Uh, we, we are happy with this. Uh, can we change that? Uh, I, I do believe that there is an holistic approach uh, to marketing. Uh, you, like I yes. said, it's not, it's not, there's no magic it's wand not, that it's you... It's not a magic uh, box. Like yeah, exactly. Just, uh, put the, the company in that and then... And uh, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, and also there's something super important. I mean, we can bring the company uh, as far as the leads. So we can generate leads. We know how to generate leads. But, but then if they don't convert, it, it, there's I mean, so much we can be responsible for. There's a lot of work. It. Uh, maybe that the company must do uh, exactly the leads. I exactly. mean, the leads are not going to, to just happen. Materialize, yeah. I mean, 
You will spend their money. Exactly. Yes. So there's a sales job that needs to be done after the marketing is done. And marketing needs to work hand in hand with the sales. But for example, if we generate uh, very good leads, we send them to uh, the person we're supposed to get in touch with them. Mm -hmm. But then, I don't know, they take 48 hours to reverse yes. back. Um, let's yes. say during the week, okay? The lead gets called and yes. then never mind. Even if the lead was qualified, you, you kind of sabotage the quality of the lead. Mm -hmm. So uh, everyone needs to work hand in hand and we try to educate our clients for that as okay. well. That yes. people expect immediate uh, response when with online when it's still uh, apart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, um, so the, yeah. The answer to your question is that it's very hard, but um, we try to do it on a monthly level of seeing where we are and uh, where we got. Of course, uh, quarterly, yearly, uh, for sure. Every January, we we look at everything that we did during the year and see what was our aces and what were what didn't work and. We learn from the results. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> very insightful. Thank you. You see, I have another question for you. Um, okay, that's uh, that's it. Um, yeah, maybe one last question. Yeah. Um, okay. So, the way, the direction, our world is going towards technology and. Uh, Websites, online platforms, uh, virtual. Do you think uh, that all businesses absolutely need online marketing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny, I just had this discussion like the other day. Uh, it, the answer is no, I don't think that everyone needs online marketing. I because, mean, the, uh, uh, sorry, I'm yeah. just interrupting. No, no, I just uh, spoke with some businesses. Um, and they say they, they are not convinced yet. Yeah. But maybe it relates to what we discussed uh, previously. Uh, yeah, the bad habits die hard. <laughs> they, it's a mindset yeah. also. You yeah. have to evolve in your mind and it will continue with your business. Yeah. I mean, you might be very uh, literate um, on your mobile and on the net. But yeah. when it comes to your business, you're like, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just so, business. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know why. Well, maybe because businesses just digest processes uh, slower. And I, I get that. I don't, uh, you know, I'm uh, absolutely not judgmental towards it. I, I hope uh, for businesses that they will do the shift faster. But just to answer your question, I don't think that everyone needs to do online marketing. I mean, the neighborhood corner, uh, what uh, probably <laughs> well, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't need, no, but he probably doesn't need, you know, if he's selling the number of what is that he wanted to sell in the morning and he's happy and he's based on food traffic because he's in top location, uh, maybe he doesn't need. Uh, but the reality today is the opposite. That there's 100% businesses, even organizations, we talk only about businesses, but you know, NGOs, they need visibility. Absolutely, yes. If they want to uh, generate more donations and, and be in touch with the community, they need to be online. So organizations today, 100% of them, I don't know. There is, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you could with full confidence say that the majority of them are online. And if they are, the way they do it is really in, in a way that represent them well and they are proud of it. And they, yeah, so. <laughs> So, because yeah. for me, like it's like uh, when uh, you uh, when you hear about person, automatically you go online and you look for that person. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do you have a Facebook page? Yeah. Do you have a, a, a trace online? Yeah. That's it. A LinkedIn page. A LinkedIn yeah. page or whatever. <laughs> Same for the business. Yeah. I mean, it's like we are looking for the consistency of the business on, on the reliability. Yeah. And if we don't find it, the trace online. Okay, it's, yeah, it sounds a little bit odd. Yeah, yeah. especially for everyone is online now. Yeah, I mean, even the the little um, bakery shop. I mean, we yeah. will say, okay, do you have a Facebook? We want to see what they are displaying, not only what we are seeing uh, in yeah. reality. Yeah, yeah, it's also uh, being in people's awareness uh, to remind you that they exist because we are. People today are bombarded. We, as individuals, are bombarded with information. We have so many platforms to, that we want to be active on, but we can't. If you think of a social uh, of social media, for example, 
Uh, most of us would be active on two. It's very hard to be very active on three, four. Like I, I have profiles on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook, but the truth is that I'm mostly active on LinkedIn and uh, Facebook. LinkedIn, I produce more content than, than I do on any other platform. Uh, email is something that we use every day. Uh, Google is something that we got so used to it that it's a no-brainer, of course, with Google. It's a verb for us. Uh, yes. So, uh, so yeah, it's... it's um, it's, it's part of our lives, whether businesses uh, agree to it or not. I mean, the change is happening. Uh, you're hopping on the train or not, yeah, you know, exactly. it's, 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 it's your true. choice. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, can you tell us more about uh, businesses who, which are more interested to be on social media? And how do they proceed? And do you have any counseling, any aspects that you want to talk more in details? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, social media for business uh, has six aspects. Uh, it's uh, my interpretation based on my experience. The first thing is strategy and planning. Second thing is copywriting. Third is the visual, whether it's a, a static design or a video. Then there is the creation of sponsored campaigns. Fifth thing is community management. And finally, analysis and reporting. Let's break it down a bit just exactly. uh, to give the audience yes, a, a more clear yeah, aspect. Yeah, for sure. So, strategy and planning. You cannot behave with your social media page. And I will take Facebook as an example only because Facebook is the biggest. But when you think of almost any social media, it's relevant. The, the methods and the thinking is the same. I'll just talk about Facebook because it's the biggest and it's the easiest. So, um, when you think about your Facebook page for business organizations, you can't behave with it like you behave with your uh, personal Facebook. We could sit here and have a chat as friends and we'll take a photo and I will upload it spontaneously to my Facebook uh, account, my personal one, and it would be very normal because that's what you do on Facebook, on Instagram. With businesses, you can't have the same behavior. Yes. You need to plan, you need to strategize, you need to be aligned with the overall company's uh, strategies, uh, marketing messages, which tone of voice you want to have on social media for your brand. Are you corporate? Are you funny? Are you accessible? Um, and in any case, the tone of voice will not be the same tone of voice like you do for your brochures, because mm -hmm. it's a completely different, uh, different uh, platform. People come to social media because of other people, not because of your business. And uh, businesses tend to be very emotional about it. It's like, yeah, I posted something and I didn't get likes. And yeah, they said this. Someone said something bad. I will talk about that in a second. Um, and and you, you can't. It's, it's a completely different approach. In a way, you need to be colder and, and treated as a detached. business channel, yes. for sure. So um, the strategy and planning um, needs to be aligned with your overall company's marketing planning. And in terms of the plan, Every month, you need to decide that you are going to communicate about what? Week, week one, week two, week three, week four. So do we have um, a, a festivals that we are celebrating this month? Is there a milestone that my company achieved and we want to communicate about? Is there a specific promo? Sales-oriented, of course, it, doesn't, it, it needs to be a good, a healthy mix of content. It cannot be only fun or only sales-oriented. It needs to be a mix. And... And then you sit and you say, okay, what do we have next month? And uh, how are we going to communicate them? And you need to keep in mind when you create this planning, what are your resources? Because even if you are very excited and you want to post every single day next month because you have something to say every single day, if you don't have the designers and the copywriters to do it, to produce it in high level, it's better you post once a week and you choose your best score quality. once a week. Exactly. Quality. Quality, you, exactly, you prioritize uh, quality over quantity, for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the first aspect. The second aspect is copywriting. So I will start with a, a fact. Most companies don't have a copywriter in-house. In it's normal, it's legit, especially for small, medium uh, companies. 
big businesses, I think that they definitely need to start looking into it. When you say copywriting, it's uh, like someone who writes. For a, yeah, as a, a, a profession. Uh, yes. It's a profession uh, uh, in itself. You're a copywriter for English, for French, for uh, sometimes both, but it's quite hard. Okay. Most, uh, most copywriters, they will specialize in one language. And um, it's their profession. They, they know how to write. They know how to engage the people on the other side. Um, they know how to write differently from Facebook to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a very corporate environment. Facebook is different. So copywriters know, know how to do this That's differentiation. Right. And they also know how to differentiate. Um, we're talking only about social media, but because you asked what is a copywriter, uh, they will write an email in a different way and a blog in another way. Okay. So they know the difference, and of course, a billboard or brochure, and so they know to differentiate and they, they do this distinction when they write the text. Um, aligned with the marketing messages and the monthly plan that we just created, so on and so forth. Uh, the next aspect is uh, the visual, whether it's a static design or video. Uh, video is a bit more complicated, so let's let's get the static covered and then we'll talk a little bit about video. The static designs are the most common ones that you see on social media, not because this is what users prefer. Users usually prefer videos over, they prioritize video over static, but because videos are, videos are relatively expensive to produce for businesses, most businesses still do only static uh, images. Doesn't mean that it doesn't work, it works uh, wonderfully. So the vision that you create needs to be aligned with the copywriting that you just did. Yes. Furthermore, the copywriter will tell you what to put on the design, on the artwork, mm -hmm. what kind of tagline. Because, and again, this it's not intuitive, so maybe I will say it when you design something for social media, your job as um, the company is to make people stop on the feed. Because how is the experience happening? A person opens their Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. They start scrolling, 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 scrolling. Our job is to make them stop. What makes them stop? The visual. So, and this is why usually it's, I recommend putting a tagline on the visual. Because okay. a person, a user looks at the visual, then they read what's on it, and only then they read the text that is below the artwork, and only then they go up to read what's above it. On Instagram, it's below, but yeah. different platforms, uh, different ways of different structure. So uh, the visual needs to be aligned with the copy and of course uh, be impactful. Uh, again, one of the most beautiful things about online marketing is that you can test and you can learn which visuals make your audience, the audience that you want to target, stop and which uh, uh, visuals make them engage, which visuals bring more leads. You can literally test that. Mm -hmm. So. This is static, and I will just say a few words about video because video really is a new chapter. I said that users prefer video. And this is related to us as individuals, our traits as uh, human beings. Uh, there is less cognitive load when we watch a video compared to reading a text, compared to looking at the visual. Video, we digest the information super fast. Yes. So we prefer video, but because it's more expensive, then uh, businesses are still uh, lacking behind uh, on that. I am hoping that uh, uh, somewhere in the world there are startups that are uh, working on ways to uh, improve it, to uh, do kind of stock <laughs> photos for video. There, there are video that you can buy on stock uh, websites, but it's, it's less authentic, it's less, uh, like, we are still not there. The revolution hasn't happened yet. So, a video just you know a few things to think about most people watch videos on social on mute a lot of companies completely ignore that when you look at their video on mute you don't understand what it is about so mute and because they do that you want to put a text that is running on the screen or subtitles which the user can understand if they uh, watch it on mute very strong opening because it's hard to keep the the audience engaged because again we are we are just about to do like this. So before I do this, grab my attention and make me uh, curious about what you're showing me. Um, yeah, and then for different platforms, it's, uh, it's different advice. For example, within the platform, you have the feed, but then you have stories. 
Stories is a top real estate, literally a top real estate. It's above the feed on yes. uh, Facebook, on Insta, on LinkedIn. And stories, the advantage is that um, you can create content that is less uh, uh, fine. You can uh, take casual photos in the office showing the life. Uh, uh, it doesn't need to be this pixel perfect pixel picture pixel perfect. Uh, because it disappears after That's 24 cool. hours. So, uh, so yeah, so it's a bit of a, a different approach. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the third aspect. And uh, moving on to sponsored campaigns, which is the fourth aspect. So paid ads is where you go to the platform. Again, I said I will talk about Facebook. So in the case of Facebook, it's the ads manager. You go to Facebook and you say, Facebook, here's my money. I have $50 for this campaign, $5,000 for this campaign. I want to target women above 30 years old um, in uh, this region that are interested in golf or are interested or are engaged shoppers. Okay, the all kinds of targeting yes. that Facebook uh, gives you within the platform. And um, you start running the campaign, okay, with the copy and the visual that you created based on your uh, planning. And, and then you need to start uh, learning from the results. We will get to that in a second. But the paid ads, this whole uh, thing of creating the ad itself, it's an art. Uh, okay. In fact, when I do trainings for Facebook, I will do one full day training about the page itself and then one full day training only about the ads manager, uh, teaching people how to create paid ads because it's not only the targeting, it's many other things. For example, different type of ads. So if you're on uh, uh, Facebook, you can see an ad that you click on it and it doesn't open the picture bigger. It doesn't send you to a website. It opens a form. It's called a lead ad. So uh, the form, the business is asking you, what is your name, what is your email, or whatever question the business wanted to ask, and you can submit your details in two seconds without going through their website. The, on Facebook, you have uh, something is called WhatsApp ad. So you click on the, on the ad, and you immediately start an interaction with the business on WhatsApp. There are many different types of ads that you can create within uh, the platform, and to take it even one step further, uh, there are augmented reality ads that are coming, so you would click on an ad and then you check the lipstick colors. So you swap the, the, the colors or you uh, take the furniture. It's a furniture business that is promoting their, business, their uh, collections. And you want to see how this chair is looking in your home. You do it from within the, the platform. So this is coming. It's still yes. not uh, very well. Yeah, so uh, this is a sponsored campaign. And then community management. Uh, I believe that community management can make or break a page. So this is how you manage all the interaction happening with your business on social media. The comments that people leave, the private messages that they send you, uh, all the questions that they ask, uh, the tagging, the conversations that they are having, uh, the reviews that they leave. Uh, so a lot of businesses are actually a bit scared of this aspect because uh, they are concerned about negative reviews or negative comments. I totally get it. Um, the only thing is that the conversation will happen with you or without you. So it's better you be in the conversation. And community management, it's really, it's an art. You need to know how to manage the interactions in a way that, um, just a, a, small, a small thing to think about. There is a X amount of people who write comments, who ask questions. There is 10X, 100X, 1000X people who see the way you reply to the people who asked the, the, the question or even said the bad comment. So sometimes when you when you have a bad comment, you need to think of how you reply, not to this person, you reply to, the, to all, all the people, exactly. Yes. The, yes. All the hundreds of people or thousands, sometimes dozens of thousands of people who will see the way you exactly. reply. And it creates uh, your image. In fact. Absolutely, and absolutely. It or destroy your absolutely. Image. So uh, yeah, community management is a very important aspect of the page. A lot of businesses um, I see, unfortunately, that they completely neglect it. And for me, neglect is someone is asking a question and you reply the day after or two days later. You're on social media, you're on a platform where people uh, communicate with each other exactly. instantly. Exactly. Yes. I always say the joke of if you send a message as an individual, if you, Jennifer, send a message to uh, your friend, uh, one of your 
family members, you send them a WhatsApp message and they don't answer after two hours. What do you think? They, they are dead, right? Yeah. If they didn't answer, they are <laughs> gone. Yeah, so, uh, and, and this is how people treat these platforms. So I think it, it's really something to consider very, very seriously to, um, to manage properly. And then the last aspect is analysis and reporting. So basically, it's to learn from your results. Monitoring. Uh, uh, no, so it's um, monitoring, it's during the month. Uh, and this is absolutely part of the deal. But when I say analysis, I would want, uh, I would want businesses to start doing at least once a month of looking at what happened. But uh, monitoring for me, it, it's related with to optimization as well. So a campaign is running, I put $5,000 on a campaign, I'm starting to spend, and now I have to monitor it and to make sure that I'm getting the results that I wanted. I need to see what's working, what's mm -hmm. not, to stop what is not working, to maybe refresh creatives, refresh the audiences, to make changes inside the campaign. So absolutely, uh, monitoring is part of it. Um, but uh, in, in, a, like in the bigger picture, analysis and reporting of what's happening uh, in a specific time period, usually one month uh, makes sense. When you spend big budgets, then of course it's more than uh, once a month. You need to do it once a week, sometimes once every two, three days if, yeah. if you're spending big budgets. So voila, these are the six aspects. <laughs> I think that if you uh, add to that, um, consistency, yes. if, you, if you get good, most businesses are, the problem is, not, not problem, challenge, uh, is that most businesses, they are good at maybe two aspects, maybe three aspects, but to be really good at social, you need to, to be excellent at the six Absolutely. aspects, yes. um, and not, not cut corners. Because everything, each aspect is very important. important. It's yeah. a <laughs> exactly. Yes. So uh, if you add consistency to this uh, recipe, you have a winning uh, social, social media page. Yeah. <laughs> so, voilà. Okay. Well, thank you a lot, Hen. Uh, Avec plaisir. And uh, what, uh, how, we, how can we contact you? I mean, as a business uh, after <laughs> listening to you, uh, wow, I would like to uh, hire you. <laughs> Okay, they don't, you don't have to immediately hire me, but you can go on uh, chenhing.com. Uh, it's my website. My company's website is quantum.mu. Uh, on both websites, there's a lot of free content where that you can uh, experiment with. On quantum.mu, we have a knowledge space. So we have the online marketing glossary that I mentioned before. We have it on the App Store and the iOS. It's called the OMG, Online Marketing Glossary. We have how to a series, videos, a series of videos on YouTube, uh, and we have our blog. And on my website, uh, I have digital courses that uh, I am, uh, actually you're the first one to know, I'm launching them, and uh, yeah, so that's the scoop. And, uh, but there are free lessons there, so people can go and watch the videos, uh, some of the videos for free, and uh, yeah, and then if they like it, get in touch, and of course. Yeah. Yes. Thank All you. All right, thank you a lot. <laughs> thank you so much. Pleasure. Online marketing. Yeah. It has been demystified, you can say. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Yeah, so here's doing great yes. online marketing. <laughs> Thank you.